legendary writer Gay Talese was a featured speaker at Boston University's annual narrative journalism conference a few days ago. But given the furor sparked by his appearance, Talese may be wishing he'd stayed in New York. Adam has more. Gay Talese is a journalistic icon known for books like The Kingdom and the Power, his history of the New York Times, and features like Frank Sinatra Has a Cold, written without the cooperation of its subject. I met a woman who was, was a maid with two pays for Frank Sinatra, interviewed her. A lot of people like that, marginal characters. At BU's recent Power of Narrative conference, poet Veranda Porsche asked Talese, who are the women who write who have inspired you most? Talese paused, named Mary McCarthy, and then said, of my generation, none. He continued. And Talese added, I think women, educated women, writerly women, don't want to or do not feel comfortable dealing with strangers or people that I'm attracted to, assorted offbeat characters. The backlash was instant and fierce, with Talese's critics casting him as an old, out-of-touch sexist. Then came the backlash to the backlash. Talese told the Boston Globe's Shirley Leung that he misunderstood the question and admires lots of women journalists, including Susan Orlean and Katie Royfe. The New York Times called Talese the victim of an online pillorying, but the anger hasn't abated. On Twitter, the hashtag WomenGateTalesShouldRead is still going strong. All right, so just to set the scene here for everybody who hasn't been following this story, Shirley Young was in the audience along with a lot of other writers from the Boston area. Tom Fiedler, w along with another Boston uh, University journalism professor, was moderating. Mm -hmm. Now, just to throw a little fire flame to this, my first reaction <laughs> <Do we need laughs> more? was to say, you've got to be kidding me. This seems to me emblematic of this generation of uh, millennials who easily takes offense and gets upset and overreacts and starts, you know, pounding away on Twitter. However, I realized there was something much bigger, uh, in effect, going on here because clearly it was more than that. So I'm going to let you how I want to hear your response to it, and then also you, you thought that Tom didn't didn't jump in and moderate right. as I tough mean, as he should have been. Now that I've had a few days to think about what's happened, I mean, I, I feel like there were three mistakes made here. One, Talese should have, fine, he didn't, wasn't inspired by female writers of when he, when he was, during his formative years, but he, he shouldn't have made a gross generalization about women, in, about women not wanting to talk, like to talk to strangers, whether it was back then or now. And that was the part mm -hmm. that got yeah. people upset. They th people thought he was talking about women today. And then I thought Twitter did overreact. I mean, they didn't get the full story. And and lastly, wow. I wish Tom, as, and I, I know <laughs> I, I do a lot of moderating and, and, and it's difficult to read the room. And I think, I think, and we've talked about this, I mean, I think in hindsight, it would have been great if Tom just asked a follow-up question, even as simple as, come again, um, just uh, because it left the impression, and this is why Twitter went crazy, that Talese had no respect for mm -hmm. female writers of, of female journalists. Of any generation? Uh, because I get the sense he was talking about his generation and and further Well, that's back. what was the confusion. There was uh, p people said that he switched to the present yeah. tense, and and later we learned that he actually admires many um, mm -hmm. female journalists of today. Um, and so, uh, you know, it it. Uh, it, All right. But to me, in the end, it, it was just, I, I think it, it got a little, it did get a lot of hand. Okay. So, Tom, oh. when you heard what he said, did it strike you one way or another? Or it was just another g statement from Gay Talese? And he, he you know, makes the, outrageous things yeah. all the time. The oddest thing about uh, the statement is there was a long pause, one of yes. those painfully pregnant yes. pauses, as he thought, and it's as if his mind is searching for a woman of his generation yeah. that he could, he could admire. And when he said none, it was pretty startling. Um, uh, and then he went on and he had a, a longer explanation yeah. that... Uh, uh, upset that people. I th upset <laughs> people. And I think what, what uh, Shirley touched on this, it, uh, he did switch tenses. He yeah. was talking in one sentence about when he came up. And then he switched over and he started using the present tense. And uh, that, uh, I think, really added to yeah. this, uh, does he not admire any even women today? But I'll tell you, the, um, looking back on it, I think Shirley's right. It would have been Should nice for me in? to say, yeah. um, would you elaborate on it? And what I, uh, I told Shirley at the time, that we had gone into the audience yeah. questions I at know, that point. Yeah. And I thought, well, do I go in and 
and reinsert myself or do I wait yeah. for the next question to come? So I hesitated, didn't do it, probably should have uh, gone back. But the one thing that I do think gets lost in these, and, and it certainly did when you get into the Twitter sphere, people who weren't there, yeah. the whole, the preceding almost hour of discussion was largely around a story that is out this week in The New Yorker that had its roots mm -hmm. in his 1980 book, uh, um, Thy Neighbor's Wife. And he was talking about, and still does, the really sordid yeah. things that he did as a journalist. Yeah. And I think in his mind, he's thinking about were there any women journalists then, or even would there be women journalists today Willing to do that, that would do the yeah. kinds of things he did? And, uh, yes. and so, anyway, it was a <laughs> well, it, yeah. I mean, can, context. Can we talk about the most important thing we learned about Gay Talese this week? And that is, in the New Yorker piece that you mentioned, Tom, uh, Gay Talese says that he covered up for this voyeur uh, even after learning that the voyeur may have participated in a murder. And he kept this information to himself for years. And I'm sitting here wondering if Talese might actually face charges of some sort. Mm -hmm. And we're still talking about this conference at BU All last right, but how did, the, how did the thing strike you? As a man of a certain age, <laughs> By the way, how did the contretemps before strike you, you? Before you redirect, we should probably just yeah. say, in case anyone out there has not read the piece, the piece is called The Voyeur's Motel, and it's about Talese getting contacted yeah. back in the 80s, right, by a guy who had rigged up yeah. his motel right. that he owned so he could watch people having sex. Right. And Talese goes, and he watches people having sex with him, and then, as Dan said, something even uh, seedier and more unpleasant All happens. Right. Just wanted to throw back, that in. Back to the contretemps. Yeah. How did it strike you? Well, do you want to give him yeah, a chance well, to answer first? Or? How did what strike me? The, the murder that he no, made? No, no. inspirational. He, he didn't participate in no, the Not, not, not having right, well. any women that he could come up with. I mean, do you think it was because he was being honest and it was... I think he was probably being honest, and I'm a little bit surprised that somebody of his age would be subjected to this sort of criticism. But, you know, there was a lot of other things going on, too. He, he has been accused of saying something incredibly disrespectful to a New York Times reporter. Yeah. Uh, there's been other incidents of sexism that he's been accused yeah, of. Yeah, this alleged quote from, uh, about Gloria Steinem about from Gloria back in the Steinem, 60s came exactly. up. Every year a pretty girl comes to New York and pretends to be a writer, and Gloria is this year's pretty girl. Uh, let me say that... that <laughs> I was fascinated, too, by the switch in tense. He started out saying, and I don't think we included it in the package because there was so much so to get much, in there. Yeah. He says something like, I'm not sure if it's true today. It's probably not true today, but back when I was young, yeah. Yeah, we you know, so. okay, women weren't doing this. And, and then he switches into the present tense to say women don't like dealing with yeah. strangers, dealing with offbeat characters. I think one weird thing about his comments is that if he read The New Yorker, where his stuff gets published, he would know. He wouldn't have to say it's probably, pardon me, probably not true today. He would know with dead certainty that it is patently untrue today yeah. that women yeah. don't like dealing with offbeat or marginal characters. Think he'll just, be coming back so it's like he's soon? closed his eyes to the <laughs> universe of women writing now, and he's fixated on this cohort of yeah. New York writers yeah. like Nora Ephron, who he likes, Katie Royfe, the sort of like in crowd of New York journalists. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was upset because I feel at the end of the day, it left the impression, you know, here's a room full of writers, many of them women, um, female mm. journalists, that their work doesn't get the same respect from this, this legendary, mm. um, you know, journalist yeah. and author. And I felt like, I think that's why people took to Twitter. They felt like they needed a voice. They were and using and words like, I felt erased, and I thought, sh I felt it shocking. Can I also just add that people were being encouraged to tweet? That was an yeah. exhortation at the conference. Tweet anyway, about the BU Narrative right. Conference and tweet. Wonderful dust up, I have to say. It was great. <laughs> <laughs>